All right, I wanted to make a video showing the different styles of thrust bearings and how to install and properly set uh, each of the popular styles. Uh, so I'm going to go through the showing you what the different bearings look like and the process of it installation. Check it out. Okay, so here we have the most common style of thrust that you're gonna find in your early, you know, domestic V8s. This is an LS, uh, so obviously more modern stuff, but like small block Ford, big block Ford, small block Chevy, big block Chevy, they all have this style, flame style thrust, where the thrust surfaces are part of the main bearing surface. Um, in the later generations of stuff, like the, uh, say the Coyote, are in multiple different import versions, you have Half the thrust is your standard style where the thrust surface is attached to the bearing surfaces here. And then on the other side, you have this floating thrust surface. This will just lay in the block. I'll show you a video of how that lays in the block on the Coyote here in a second. Uh, so your goal when setting the thrust, specifically when you have two halves, right, like this, is to make sure that when you install these, the reason you gotta do this is you wanna make sure that they are lined up perfectly in this direction. You don't want them to be offset by a couple thou. You need them to be perfect. And how you achieve that is by moving, you know, you torque how I do it. I torque all the bearings. I'll loosen the, the bearing cap that the uh, thrust bearing is on. Um, we'll just, you know, like I said, torquing it so it's set, free it up, and then we'll move the crankshaft back and forth. The idea is, is that the surface, the thrust surface of the crank will align these two bearing halves. Now in something like the, the uh, Coyote here, um, you have to align, obviously this is only on one half of the, one side of the bearing. There isn't another half of this, it is one thrust surface. Uh, this is typically on the flywheel side of the engine. Uh, so what happens is you're only aligning this with the back half. So you only have to push the crankshaft in one direction to get this bearing half in the correct location uh, to line up with this when it's pressed against the block. That's your your goal is to press this against the block and have this pressed to the same spot so that they are aligned perfectly when installed and that cap is torqued for the final time. Same process, uh, just different deal. Um, so those are the two common tile styles of thrust bearings we see in here. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this crankshaft in this Coyote and show you how to set it. Actually, before I do that, I'm just gonna show you real quick how this thrust surface sits in the block. On the Coyote, they sit right in the back and it's literally gonna, oops, if I don't drop it first, hold on, sorry. It sits right there. So it's got a tang. The tang sits on that side of the block to stop it from spinning and it just sits there. Uh, I be sh I'm always sure to oil these surfaces on both sides of the bearing, both the thrust surfaces um, before I install it. But uh, you get the idea that just sits in the block like so and it floats in there and you're trying to line that surface up with the surface of the, the thrust surface of the bearing that's in the cap. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw this crankshaft in here and show you how I do that part. Okay, so now that I've got the uh, crankshaft in and torqued and the rear main, which the rear main on this one is the uh, thrust bearing, right? So I've got that untorqued. I've got my dial indicator set up. Um, I'll try to get you a shot of this thing without all the glare on it here. Um, but it's moving, that's zero. It's move. I know it's hard to see this, right? So bear with me, but it's moving three thou right now. I haven't put a, a pry bar or hit it with a hammer and 
Some people will do that, obviously, again, referring to our previous video for the Frankos in this, um, the uh, thrust bearing is only half on this. It's a floating bearing on the block side, uh, which means we only push the crankshaft in one direction when setting the thrust. If you move it both directions, you're really not accomplishing anything other than moving the thrust surface on that bearing, uh, potentially in the wrong direction. So you gotta make sure you push the crankshaft forward uh, pretty much every time. So. I'm going to do that uh, real fast and then I will show a video of the after. Okay, now that I move this thing around with a pry bar, check this thing out. It's not zero right now. Gosh, that glare is horrible. Here, maybe that'll help. Okay, so if I pull it forward, we get about one negative, push it back, or three the other direction. So it's moving four thou. So we moved it about a thou, which means there was just a thou offset from when that uh, block side uh, thrust bearing was flat against the block to where the, the captured or whatever the flanged thrust bearing was on the main camp side. I'm really struggling to talk. Um, but that's that's how you set these up. So dial indicator on it, check it, record your number, um, you know, for your notes, and then uh, go from there. All right, you saw how I did the coyote thrust with the uh, with a pry bar. Uh, this one, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. Um, I'm gonna show you uh, basically that it doesn't move now. This thing has a horrible glare on it, I know, so just watch the dial indicator. I try to move this thing. Nothing, it's literally not moving. Eh, half a thou. Eh, maybe say it's recorded a thou. Anyway, nowhere near enough. Uh, so what I'm gonna do with this is a little bit different than the pry bar thing. I'm gonna do this actually with the hammer and this. This is a plug, just a block of nylon, basically just a cushion. Obviously, you don't want to hammer against the end of the crank with a hammer. That would be dumb. Uh, so we're gonna use this. Sometimes I use, I have like a like an all plastic uh, dead blow that I'll use for a cushion. I'll hit that dead blow with another hammer. Um, but uh, now you saw that zero, I've already got these caps torqued in the thrust one loose. So I'm gonna smack this thing a couple times and then I will show you the dial indicator again. Obviously, I have to pull it off to do that. So I'm gonna do that. All right, so rather than doing a time lapse of this one, it's just gonna take me a minute. I'm just gonna let the camera roll. So. That guy off of there. Give it a couple good racks. There, and then back forward again. You can hear it sound different. You probably can pick that up in the camera, but one more time just to be good. Set the indicator back up here. The reason I typically prefer doing it with a pry bar or with a hammer thing is just it's way less violence, right? Um, which is uh, just, I just prefer that. Uh, this way it does work and it is common practice. So I thought I would be just demonstrate it because it was something you guys might want to see. All right, so now that I've done that, check this out. Got what, three and a half thou? So right on the, right on the money there for where it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and torque the mains all down, or the center main down again, and uh, call this thing good. So that's uh, ran through the thrust setup on both the Coyote, which is a floating thrust half, and then the LS, which is not a floating half like you saw earlier in the video. So if I have any questions on how to set the thrust up, um, just leave me a comment. Or if you want to see videos on different ones, like some of the specifically Mitsubishi seven bolts where the whole cap, the whole cap set up a girdle and you got to move that whole girdle uh, to set the thrust correctly, which often gets messed up and is usually why they have crank walk issues. Um, so I could do a video on that if you guys would like. If you want that, uh, please just comment on the video and I will make it happen. Thanks for watching.